Hi, my name is Tammy and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to discuss six principles that femme fatales live by. So let's not waste any time and let's get right into it. So when we hear the phrase femme fatale, a lot of people go by what they see in the movies. The woman that is fatal to men, hence the name femme fatale. They think about them as man eaters, being manipulative, hating men, wanting to take the man down, being seductive to get what they want. They can't be trusted. But for me, when I am speaking about a femme fatale, I'm speaking about the modern day femme fatale. I'm speaking about a woman who knows her power, who knows her strengths, who uses her strengths to her advantages, who understands and knows her self-worth and self-value. A woman who likes power, a woman who likes control, but not necessarily for bad reasons. It's all about protecting yourself and protecting your time and knowing who to relinquish your power to. They have rules and principles that they live by to help protect themselves. And today we are going to discuss six of those. So let's get into it. Number one, learn to control your emotions. Master this. If you can't master this step, then we can't go any farther. We might as well just stop the video right here because none of the other steps matter. Controlling your emotions is by far the most powerful ability that a femme fatale has and also the hardest. Being a modern femme fatale is all about stepping into your power, being your best self, honing your value and protecting your self-worth. But if you work solely out of emotions, you will compromise all of that. Now, I'm not saying that being an emotional person is a bad thing. I'm not saying emotions are a bad thing. Emotions can be beautiful. Emotions remind us that we're here and that we're present and that we're human. We definitely don't want to be robotic. But the issue is, is when the emotions get out of control, we have to rely on logic to pull us back in. And of course, this is easier said than done. But no matter what you want to do, you have to train yourself to do what you have to do. Femme fatales feel, but they don't allow feelings to overwhelm them because they understand that feelings can be temporary, unreliable, and a liability. Not being able to control your emotions can allow you to be or continue to be in bad situations, bad relationships, bad friendships when you know you don't need to be. Uncontrolled emotions allow you to think irrationally and sometimes act out in a way that makes things worse and not better. When you have uncontrolled emotions, you're not able to think as clearly or be as intact physically as if you were in a sound mind. That's why you hear a lot of times people say, don't drive when you're emotional. So, Femme Fatales have what I call an armor of protection. And the reason they have this because a lot of them have been in traumatic situations, have dealt with a lot of pain, a lot of loss, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of heartache. They know what it's like to go through emotional issues. They've lost many battles and many bouts with emotions. So they understand what it feels like to go into situations and not having on that armor so they much rather have on a layer of protection. Femme Fatales work so hard on their emotions because losing control can be embarrassing and they don't want to give away their power prematurely or to the wrong person. Allowing the wrong person to see you vulnerable could cause them to take power over you in a bad way and use it to manipulate you. Now, this works both ways. This could work when you are having sad or mad or angry emotions towards someone, but it also can work when you're having positive or happy emotions towards someone. So say, for example, you're dating someone 
um, say you've been dating for about a month and it's going well, you have high hopes for the relationship, you think the person is promising, but remember you've only been a month in. A femme fatale will, even though they feel excited, they would kind of hold back showing that emotion because if indeed this is the wrong person for them, this person may have bad intentions for them and take those same emotions and spin it back on them, meaning they may feel like, okay, I got her right where I want her. She's really into me. Now I can take full control and they can take that and use it to manipulate you. So they have to be very careful about this and they have to go by a principle in which I call take what you have and hold. So what does it mean to take what you have and hold? Well, no matter how bad a person may have hurt your feelings, no matter how heartbroken you may be over a relationship, no matter even if a coworker sabotaged you out of a promotion, take what self dignity and respect you have in that moment and just hold still. Because femme fatales understand that there is a time and a place in which the person that wronged them will come back and need them for something or want to be back friends or want to be back in a relationship. And in that moment is where she will be the most powerful. This is where femme fatales take center stage and you will not see it coming. Now, if you ever get a femme fatale to this point. I can't help you. It goes down from there. Because think about it. If you truly wronged and truly hurt them, first of all, they already know that karma is coming your way. And they're going to use that as a springboard to set up the perfect opportunity to get you back. And you have to remember that they have been sitting in that pain smiling through hurt feelings, controlling their emotions, letting it all just build up inside. So if you have wronged somebody, please apologize because if she is a femme fatale, she will set the bait and the trap and eloquently watch as it clamps down on you. Number two, love your flaws and never tell anyone your flaws truly. Now, this has two parts, so let's break down the first part, loving your flaws. Love your flaws. Love the skin that you're in. Femme Patels empower their flaws. They celebrate their flaws, unlike some other women who think that their flaws maybe hinder them or weaken them. Femme Patels use their flaws as an opportunity to stand out and to be unique. And they do this by bringing you to them. Now, what do I mean when I say bringing you to them? Well, they have a way of flipping the popular vote. So, for example, say the beauty standard is purple hair, blue eyes, a size four. And the femme fatale has black hair, size eight and brown eyes. So she's not the beauty standard right now. She's not the popular vote, but she doesn't let that get to her. So what she will do instead, she will wear clothes that flatter her body. She will wear colors that pop her skin tone, that pop the color of her hair. She will walk around the people that do fit the beauty standard with so much confidence and be so unbothered that the people that do fit the beauty standard will start to question themselves and they will start to question, why don't I look like her? Because naturally, when the femme fatale does this, she's gonna get compliments. She is going to empower herself. She is going to become more and more confident as she goes on because usually the person or the people that fit the beauty standards, they have people validating them. They have social media validating them. The femme fatale validates herself. And when you can validate yourself, you will exude an unstoppable, confident, 
powerful energy about you that no one can take. And that will actually make people start to question themselves. So in return, the popular vote gets flipped and the femme fatale becomes the most desired. Now I'm going back to the bringing them to you method. Where have we seen this little trick done before? Well, an example of this would be, I will use the girls group Destiny's Child. Now I don't quite remember when the song came out, but it was during the time when they put out the song Bootylicious. Now in the group during this time was Kelly, Michelle, and Beyonce. Now, Kelly and Michelle are more towards the slender side, and Beyonce was more of the curvaceous, voluptuous side. And I do believe during this time, being slender was more of the beauty standard. So what did Beyonce do? She wrote a song called Bootylicious, where she elevated what some may think was a flaw. She celebrated it. She empowered it. She used it as an opportunity to stand out and be unique. And in doing that, what did she do? She flipped the vote and it became the popular vote. It worked because it works. So if you don't necessarily like something about yourself or you may not be the standard, who cares? Bring them to you. Show them a new standard. Show them your type of beauty. Celebrate yourself, uplift yourself, and walk in that confidence, and you will be surprised at the positivity and feedback you get from that. Now, the second part of this is never tell anyone your flaws, truly. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, I'm pretty sure you have all seen situations or scenarios when a friend has confided in a friend or you even confided in an associate. You told them your flaws or something that you're insecure about. And the moment they get mad at you, they use your flaw against you and they throw it up in your face. That's one reason you never tell anyone your flaws. Basically what I mean, you don't tell the wrong people your flaws. You don't confide and tell the wrong people your insecurities. Now, the question is, how do I know if this person can be trusted. This could be a friend of seven, 10 years. How do I know? Or why shouldn't I be able to trust this friend with telling them my insecurities or my flaws? So in that situation, you still want to tread lightly, but if you do end up telling what you believe is a good friend your flaws, don't let them know how deep it is. So say, for example, you don't like your hands or you don't like your hair or you don't like your shoulders. You can mention it. You can kind of throw it out here and there, but, but don't let them know to what extent. They don't need to know how deep it is because if they are not your friend and they don't have your best intentions, you better believe that they are going to take that and use that against you some way, somehow. And they don't even have to verbalize it. They can do it in other ways. So, so say, for example, you don't like your neck. For whatever reason, you don't like your neck. And you confide in this friend and say, hey, you know, I really don't like my neck. I'm really insecure about it. And she listens and she appears to be a trusted friend. Now, if she's not really your friend and if she's really vengeful and spiteful, the moment you make her mad, or she doesn't get what she wants from you. Even if she doesn't throw your insecurity in your face verbally, she will put you or guide you in a situation to where she still can throw it in your face. So say for example, like I said, you don't like your neck and you told her about this, she's mad at you for whatever reason, and now she wants to get you back. So what she could do, for example, would be, you guys could be out shopping, and she will purposely go into a section where there are V-cut shirts or shirts that show and expose your neck, and she will brag and say, oh, I'm so glad I love these shirts. I, I love how these shirts look on me. Oh, I'm sorry, I wish you could have one. She may 
try them on in front of you knowing that it may kind of hurt your feelings because you're not someone that would wear shirts that would show your neck. So in a way, she's kind of taunting you and doing something that she knows will get under your skin. Number three, be unique. Be the blueprint. Now, as cliche as it sounds for someone to tell you to be unique, be yourself, be different, be original, a lot of women sleep on this trait. There are some women that will look at social media, they'll look at what their peers are doing to try to help them formulate what they should be doing next. Film Vitales don't do that. They go by the beat of their own drum. They do what makes them feel good. They don't like to copy what others are doing. They don't like others to copy what they are doing. They like the power of being different. They like the power of being themselves. They don't like the term fake it till you make it. They don't wanna fake anything. They want to naturally feel good inside and feel good about themselves or do what it takes to feel good about themselves because they know that when you truly feel good about yourself, you are truly confident and you have to remember Femme Patel's work inside a confidence. They like a challenge. So being unique for them is fun, it's challenging. They like to raise the stakes. They don't like to play it safe. When it comes to the term dress for success, Femme Fatale's more so dress for what they want to get out of it. <laughs> so for example, if they are invited to a party and their goal is to meet someone that they could have a romantic interest in, and the dress code is to dress casual, well, they'll dress casual, but they're a version of it. They will take some casual elements, but they will dress it up in a way that's more catered to, maybe more fun, more flirty. They will kinda take it up a notch. They don't get lazy when it comes to this. If everybody is wearing skirts or dresses, they may wear a pantsuit. If she's going to an all white party where everyone is supposed to wear all white, she will wear all white, but she will have like a red purse. She is going to give herself the edge. She's going to push it a little bit further than the average. Now, for some women, this is extra work. This is extra energy. For a femme fatale, this kind of thing gives them energy. They like having opportunities where they can show their uniqueness, where they can stand out. These kind of things fuel them, and they like to be themselves. You have to remember femme fatales like control. They like power. So if they get an opportunity to exude power or control or to show dominance, they will do that. Now you have to understand that femme fatales are not only powerful because they understand feminine energy, they're powerful because they also understand masculine energy. So they know what men want to see. They know what stands out to men. They understand it. They don't want to be in comparison. If you zig, they're going to zag. They don't like for you to come over in their lane and they don't really care to go over into your lane. These are very focused individuals that know what they want and are very confident and grounded within themselves. They know who they are. So they have no problem being different, being the oddball, standing out. This is where they thrive. So an example of this would be, say she's at a party with her friends and there's this one guy there that everybody seems interested in, but he doesn't really seem interested in anyone. But all of the other women are fawning after him, watching him, they're kind of following him, they're kind of giving him attention. He kind of knows that they are into him. What the femme fatale will do, she will pay him dust. She will be the one that does not pay him any attention that will walk right past him and not give him one single look, although she knows he's looking. Because she's acting the opposite of everyone else, the attention is going to naturally go towards her. Now, while the other women are wondering what he's thinking, he's wondering what she's thinking. Number four, be well educated. Know a little something about everything. 
Education is key. Remember when we were in elementary school and they would say knowledge is power? Well, as cliche as that sounds, it is absolutely true. Education and communication connects us all around the world. Education and communication is the one thing that allows us to connect to all different kinds of people. Now, as you know, Finn Patels are known to be very beautiful and stunning, but they become even more beautiful and magnetizing when the intelligence matches. So just to give you an example of how powerful this can be, say you were at some kind of venue or an event where you are around all different types of people on all different levels. There are different groups from different backgrounds talking about different subjects. You have to be able to work the room. And one way to do that is knowing a little something about everything. Now you don't have to be an expert and there are gonna be some things that you are an expert in and that you do know a lot about. But there are a lot of things that you may not know a lot about. So you want to be someone that reads, that brushes up on the latest news, latest trends. You wanna read regular novels. You want to read self-help books. Anything that you can get your hands on that kinda gives you a little knowledge about different types of things. Because what happens is, if you're in one of those scenarios where you're around a lot of different type of people, you may find yourself with a group of people, say for example, they're talking about kayaking and you have never kayaked a day in your life, <laughs> but you've read about it. So when you're around this group and you're around these people, they're talking about kayaking. And I'm not saying just jump in there and just start spilling what you know to fit in. That's not going to work. What I'm saying is, if you're around this group and these people and they're talking about kayaking, wait patiently for an opening to insert what you know about kayaking. And before you know it, you're having a full on conversation and you're able to add value to the conversation. You always want to be an asset in some way. You always want to be able to share something in some way. You want to be able to communicate and relate in some way. And if you need to, you want to be able to leave an impression. So if you can kind of dibble and dabble into different little things or take a mental note of different little things when you're in those settings, it's really going to pay off for you. Also on top of that, what's even more intriguing and magnetizing is if you're in that conversation and they're talking about kayaking and you look like a person that's never kayaked in your life, but you surprise them and then you start talking about what you know about kayaking, the different kind of boats that you can use, so forth and so forth. Do you know how attractive that is? Do you know how hypnotizing that is? It's the element of surprise and it works every single time. And the way you create those kind of moments, you have to be smart, meaning strategic, and you have to have intelligence and knowledge of different things. You have to be able to speak to what you know about and the things that you don't know about. You still need to be able to contribute. And this adds to the level of intriguement. You're not only beautiful and stunning and desirable, you're on a whole nother level. You're also intelligent. You know how to speak. You know what to speak about. You know things that people didn't think you knew. And that within itself elevates you to a high level of desirability. Another reason Finn Patel's value education is because they don't like to get caught slipping. They like to know what they're getting themselves into. They do not like surprises. And if they don't know about something, they have no problem going to get a book, reading about it. They have no problem brushing up on it. They will learn how to work with you, navigate around you, or overtake you. Number five, make an unlikely friend. Make an unlikely friend. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, like I stated earlier, Finn Patels are some of the most beautiful and intriguing women that you will ever encounter. So because of their beauty and because of how alluring they are, 
A lot of times you would assume or you would think that they only align themselves with people that have a lot of money, people that are CEOs, people that have a lot of power, people that are in prestigious positions, but that is not necessarily the case. You have to remember that femme fatales see things, they see people, they see situations and circumstances as a game in a sense. They kind of look at it like chess and to a lot of people and according to the rules, the queen or the king, those are two of the most powerful players, not to a femme fatale. A femme fatale sees all the players as powerful players, especially pawns. They love pawns because in the game of chess, there are many of them and you can use them in many different ways. So, for example, let's just say this particular femme fatale, she is a ballerina. She's a ballet student. She goes to a studio and she rehearses every night. And let's just say the studio closes at eight o'clock every night. But because she's driven, she really does want to be the best dancer there. She wants more time to be in the studio. She wants more time to hone her craft and to hone her gift. So the studio closing at eight o'clock is not good enough for her. And let's just say some big recital is coming up and she wants to shine and she wants to be the number one. Well, who does she need to be in cahoots with? Not the CEO. Because a lot of times when you work at these corporate jobs, you may see the CEO's face on an email, but you never get to meet them. You never get to see them. You would probably never have an opportunity to speak with them. So they're powerful, but how powerful are they to you? So in this situation with the ballerina, her best bet would be to befriend the person with the key. The person with the key is most likely going to be the janitor. It goes back to what I was saying. The femme fatale sees all the players and it's all equal playing ground because what that janitor can do, they can put that key underneath the rug at night and allow that ballerina to get an extra practice time and tell her when you're done, just put the key back under the rug. So in return, she gets extra practice time and when it's time for the recital, she shines. That is just one example of making an unlikely friend. In that situation, the femme fatale would befriend the janitor. And it's not to say that femme fatales do everything strategically. They honor kindness. They like to be kind to people. They understand the power of kindness. They really do understand the phrase, treat the CEO the same as you would treat the janitor. They really get that because like I said earlier, a lot of femme fatales became femme fatales because they were not treated kind. They were not shown the grace and the compassion. So they take and like kindness to a whole nother level. And because they understand the power of kindness, they understand the power of making an unlikely friend. And number six, be observant and a great note taker. Femme Patels are great note takers. I'm not just talking about physically taking notes. I'm talking about mentally taking notes. Not too much goes unnoticed by a Femme Fatale. They are natural observers which is why they are naturally quiet. They are always watching and observing how you treat yourself and how you treat others because that lets them know how you will treat them. And like I said earlier, they don't like surprises and they don't like to be caught slipping. They keep a tally on things. They keep a tally on how you treat them. And this is not necessarily to hold grudges this is to protect themselves. So if they allow you within their personal space, you better believe they have watched you or they understand enough about you. Now this is not necessarily because they like control. 
This is also because they don't want to be hurt. This goes back to how they protect themselves. As anybody would, they naturally want good people around them. They want to be loyal to the right people. They want to trust the right people. Remember, being hurt by someone they thought was loyal is how they became a femme fatale in the first place. They want to build a team of people that can be mutually beneficial. Femme fatales like to elevate, so they take notes. They watch, they observe. So if they know that someone is capable or is out to sabotage them or to try to ruin their reputation, trust and believe they're probably gonna be two or three steps ahead of you because they've already scoped the scene. They've already watched how you move. Finn Patels have very good instincts and it was probably something about you that sent them an alert or signaled to them that they should probably be careful around you or be very observant around you. So that's all we have for today's video. So what do you all think about the six principles? Which one do you think you would struggle with the most and which one would you like to have the most? Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.